You get down on one knee and chug the whole thing. I mean, we fell into it a little bit. When I started a band with Nick, he, it was always an opportunity that we could tour the UK because I'm from the UK. And then it came up into conversation when Nick's ba other band, Failing Street, played with Calling All Captains. And they mentioned about going to the UK and he started, at least he brought the ideas together. And he was like, let's do this together. And then he just dropped the fucking workload onto me. He was like, okay, go book a tour for the UK. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. We've always been a band to believe that like nobody's going to give you a hand. If you want something, you work for it and you do it yourself. And that's what this tour has always kind of put on the map for us is we wanted this bad enough. We came out here, we put everything on the line. Some of us quit our jobs. We've been talking about doing this for a long time and we have a little bit of a fan base here and pop punk is big here. So um, last year we had planned to do a UK tour and it just didn't work out. And uh, so this year it all just kind of came together and we saved up money from our jobs and just came out here and did it. We've been playing a tour game that is The Floor is Lava, but we got bored with it really quick so we started changing or like adapting it and just making it whatever we wanted. So we're sitting outside this venue and uh, suddenly Nick goes, Guys, your clothes are lava, and everyone just starts stripping off their clothes in the middle of uh, in the middle of the street outside this venue. thousand miles away and like there's so many people that just into the music they're like singing back the words like, I really enjoyed the Southampton show because like it was crazy there's like a small room there's like people like crowd surfing like mic grabbing everyone's just so into it like there for the show there for the music and it was really nice to actually have that it felt like a nice hometown show but 2,000 miles away where like it, yeah I just really like it it's been extremely stressful. My like relationship has been suffering from this, definitely because particularly the time difference. I... Me too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I finish work at like say 5 p.m. or whatever, and then go straight out and do about five hours every single day, like contacting people in the UK, talking around, getting stuff sorted. It's been stressful, but you know it's kind of what you got to do. We've it's all worth it. We all have fun. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a simple case of talking with people. Uh, talking with other bands, being like, hey, would you be interested in getting on this show? And trying to find local support, local headliners for each show. And, and then it's straight up just booking a tour. So it's, it's contacting the venues, um, trying to get promoters interested, trying to get people on board with it. In general, like Fraser's done most of the booking and talking to venues, setting up shows. But we've all split all of our costs. We've all paid for our own plane tickets. We all work full-time jobs back home, so we fly out Monday and we gotta be at work on Tuesday. Like the dream was always to like play in other cities and instead of our hometown and especially um, with uh, with our friends in, in Calling All Captains. Like we've done uh, a tour together now back in March where we did a little like sort of Western Canadian tour. Uh, out to Saskatchewan, yeah. Um, out to Saskatchewan in Alberta, um, as well as our hometown uh, in Vancouver and BC. Oh, 
other. If you don't use crack and British culture, there's, it's it's so awesome. They they just have a more welcome heart. They have an open mind about uh, the surroundings and other people, and it's just cool to see multiculturalism sort of blooming in places like here in Leeds and Manchester um, and in Birmingham and stuff like that. So cool, so cool. I kind of have like this preconceived notion about English people and their accents, and they all have bad teeth and everything, but. It was like, actually I thought the buildings would be more modern, but like everything is like really old school and like Victorian style architecture and there's like a million clock towers in every city and I thought it would be raining more. People here are a lot more focused on arts and, and they think that like, you know, the art scene and music scene and everything is, is quite important here. Whereas like at home, I think that people kind of disregard art a lot and think that that if you're if you're an artist or a musician that you're kind of wasting your time because you're not able to like make tons of money and I think that's a huge part of American North American culture I'm sure it's like all around the world but um, I find here that a lot of people are very like into art and they think that it's, it's like just as important as being uh, you know, like an engineer or a doctor or something, right? I love the, some of the slang around here. Uh, I'm definitely bringing like cheers and shade back home. Uh, proper and raw and uh, literally. People here are much more knowledgeable about music. Like music is very, very much so a part of like English lifestyle because like I'll ask someone what kind of music they like and they'll be like, oh, I like grime, drum and bass and like I've never even heard of those genres. Like it's really cool because like grime is like kind of like this underground rap scene, but all the rap is like really aggressive and like it's like really British in a sense. It's like I've never heard grime play anywhere in North America, but here it's like a made mainstay of like the club scene, and it's really cool. And um, I'm just getting exposed to a lot more music out here, and that's I'm really thankful for. It. What do I want to take back to Canada from England? The cheap booze the beautiful people, the parties every night. And I mean, like everything about this place has just been awesome. Like, I love England to no end, and so it's always been kind of the dream to come over and play music, so to be able to do this and kind of experience it from this perspective as opposed to a tourist, there's nothing I want to take back outside of memories and cheap beer prices. I'm from the UK, and a lot of these cities that we've played I've been to before, particularly for the touristy stuff, I, I did not really do. Um, two days off, I just let the guys go do some touristy stuff. Because I've got family here as well. This tour took, you know, it's two weeks back in England, but I saw my parents for two, two days, maybe three days? Two and a half days, I think. Um, so I tried to spend as much time with them as possible and, you know, maximize that family time. Um, but as well, with, with this tour, five of the dates were run by us, so I hired out the venue, had to do the door, sort out the times, get the bands on and all of that, so it's, I haven't had a chance to enjoy England or really treat it like a, like a band does on tour. The last tour we did, you know, we would go and hang out all day and do chill things, but this entire tour I've been on my phone or driving or doing work, tour related, I'm frigging tired to be honest. Making some uh, pasta here. Got some corn and pork in a little pan here, seasoned with some chili powder, paprika. We got some onions in there. Always gotta have onions. Healthy dose. You know, we got some uh, some conch pasta. I don't know how to call it. Conch <laughs> legally or something like that. Okay. Some shell pasta. There you go. Some noodles. Cooking in the kitchen with Chef Fanzi. 
The way that people, I think, are more receptive to music, especially up north, I've noticed, like, we were just flyering on the streets, and, you know, we actually got people in the door that way just because they were like, yeah, sure, I want to listen to music. One of the other shows that we were at, we, we were expecting a really low turnout, and we went out and we were just handing out flyers, and it's, it's almost, like, when you're doing that, it's almost kind of like, hey, here you go, here's the flyer, and you expect maybe like a 2% success rate with that, but we actually saw a lot of people come to the shows just from just from telling them about it, just to support it, and they, they kind of seemed like at first glance, like they might not really be into it, but they still came and checked it out, and that's like really cool. So then we've got calling all captains. Yeah, so uh, we're calling all captains from Edmonton, or Alberta in Canada, and uh, I'm Mike, I sing, and... Uh, I'm Luke, I play drums. I'm Connor, I play guitar. I'm Brad, I play guitar as well. And I'm Nick, I play bass. <laughs> that is grim. It's <laughs> not grim. <laughs> You're lying. I think it's the alien because he's gonna mess everything up. <laughs> I think that like coming here and seeing people that actually like know us and, and like sing along to the words of our songs is super unexpected. Um, like we knew coming here that there were a few people that kind of knew about us. It's almost like at every show we'll see like at least like one or two people that are kind of singing along to the words of our songs, which is really cool. Like it's very humbling to, to see that. We actually have like really cool fans here too because like we had, um, we had a fan bring us like a package of, of goodies and stuff that we don't get in Canada, which was amazing. Like we we got to experience the you know like the British side of things, where you know things that we don't get to experience back home, which I think is really cool. And like it's cool that fans will like go out of their way to to like do things for their favorite bands. It's so cool. You can't do this in England. They don't have these. Illegal. <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> Rude boy. Rude boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you go higher or not? No, it's, no, it's perfect. <laughs> this is the Dawkins way. Somebody filmed it. Got it. <laughs> Do it for the video. <laughs> That's your last step. Good job, Docs. Oh, he's in. For some people, the tour is hard. You're sleeping on floors and couches, and you're broke all the time, and you eat like shit, and it feels normal and natural like now at the end of the tour. We're like, man, I could, I could go for like weeks more from this. I think at the beginning of the tour, everyone was pretty, pretty on the same page. Like, you know, we wake up, I guess at a, a decent hour, anywhere between like eight and eleven, and then we drive and whatever we see the city. That's great. But uh, after our Brighton show, we drove overnight to Southampton. I think everyone ended up staying up until like four, four thirty. We saw the sun come up, and that just ended up being a pattern, which is probably not the healthiest thing, but because the drives are so shorter and you're not having to drive for seven, eight, nine hours, you know, either all day or through the night, you definitely have that luxury. What's different about like drinking here versus in Canada, it's uh, I don't get ID a whole lot, which kind of amazes me. Prices are really cheap. Uh, last night was $2 everything at the bar, so we were having a pretty good time buying Jaeger bombs for two bucks and going hard. and. I mean, like, I've been drinking tequila beer called Desperado, which is the gnarliest thing ever because I don't drink tequila, but it's delicious. You walk around during the day and you don't see anyone. Everyone's in their houses watching TV. They'll go out to grab a bite, but you don't see people out in public places enjoying themselves. Here, everywhere I've been, there's tons of people around enjoying themselves. Everyone interacts. Everyone loves each other. It's just really good vibes out here. Jump is still as high as I'd normally jump <laughs> with you on me. Ow! <laughs> Alright, we're gonna take the fat kid. Alright, I'm gonna try and jump. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> 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 
Highlights of this tour, I mean, the shows are obviously great, but it's also been really cool just kind of walking around, seeing all the cities, uh, like a lot of the downtown areas. I mean, just the cities in general are really cool, like seeing all the old buildings, and there are lots of castles right in like the downtown sectors, which is wild. <laughs> My favorite day of tour has been this day so far, I guess. My favorite show has been uh, the Froom show. It was just great seeing all that energy. A uh, bunch of fans of uh, Fraser, who's our singer, uh, family and friends of his, and it was just a great show overall. Uh, we had a lot of fun there. Everybody was singing along. It was just an overall good time, you know. Kind of hard to pick like a favorite one, uh, just because like there's the shows like in. Manchester, like Manchester went off and it was crazy, or in Bristol, like hanging out with the dudes in Montrose, or in Brighton, like Brighton itself is a beautiful city, or the house party, the house party went off in Southampton, so it's hard to pick like a favorite show, but if anything, I'd say like the Southampton show is probably the craziest one we played and the funnest one I've played. In Manchester, the vibe was really good. It was in a tiki bar, uh, and it was also a venue, which is exactly what I want out of life. London, because of all the, the cool things there are to see, all the things I've seen in movies my whole life. Uh, my favorite brand being the Beatles, they've done stuff all over here, and especially London, I found really cool. Um, the thing that sticks out for me is the buildings, all the architecture. There's buildings here that are older than our entire country, and Brad. Sorry, oh. <laughs> Just because it was my hometown, I got to see friends and family and they came out and the venue was pretty packed. Um, uh, but Manchester was really cool as well. Not today, great band. They unfortunately are parting ways, so they pulled a really good crowd for us and it was really busy, the venue was sick. I don't know if I would say that I have a favorite city to play because I think that all of the shows that we've played so far, people are really involved here. At home you don't see that, like a lot of people are too like, almost like too cool to like move around and enjoy themselves. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> Tough. <laughs> They're after his lucky charms! Not even 10 seconds, fellas. Well, I guess I'm not the only one who has issues letting go. Cause I'm desperately trying. To hold on to what's left of my past My heart could run a marathon When I see your smiling old photographs The look on your face screams that you're sad But don't worry darling Those light eyes they'll never burn out And it seems like I keep holding on to I met this guy at a chicken shop and I was like, hey. And he's like, hey, you're kind of talking funny, where are you from? And I was like, oh, I'm from Canada. And then we just like got in like a 20 minute conversation about like the bands we liked and you just never get that where I'm from. It's really cool. You should care about your neighbors and care about people as like a group instead of just like caring about yourself or caring about your, your like close immediate family. I think what we've done is difficult. This has not been an easy tour to book or to, to finance or to do. 
Um, so I think a lot of bands don't do this sort of thing. There definitely are some bands that do do it. Um, but it's not done usually just because it is a big risk. It's a lot of work and you know there's a huge risk of getting very little reward. But it's an experience. At the end of the day, like we enjoy being on tour, we enjoy playing shows every night. We've just been talking just now about how shit it's gonna be tomorrow not playing a gig and for the you know coming weeks not playing gigs every night. I'm not really sad about that. We enjoy doing this. And just for that sole reason I think that's why bands should do this. If they like playing gigs and like going on tour, then I think those are the kind of bands that do go out and, and put the effort into to book these kind of tours. It's what we want to do, so yeah. The only thing I think that's holding up back a bunch of other bands is they're scared. Like we're, without a doubt, there's, don't get me wrong, we're terrified over here. We could have shows go bad, we could be broke, we could have nowhere to sleep, we could not be able to afford our flights home and be stranded in another country, but it's a risk we we're willing to take because this is what we want more than anything in the world, and so fuck it, let's go. You're young, you can grow up, and you can pay for your mistakes then. Right now, it's up to you and nobody else. No one is gonna do this for you. You put your foot to the ground, you go out and you handbill every night, you tell every person you can about the shows, about your band. Anybody who's willing to listen will listen, and they will support you, and they will back you. So get out there and do it.